Lord. Praise the King of Kings. Praise the Lord of Lords. Rise on your feet and let's celebrate the King of Kings, the Immortal, the Invisible, the only wise God, our Redeemer, Strong Tower, the reason why we are here this evening. Let's rise up and shout a good hallelujah. Praise the Lord.
commit this program into your hand. Every segment of today's program. Let your name be glorified. Let your name be magnified. Let your name be exalted. In the mighty name of Jesus we have prayed. Amen. Put your hands together and celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah.
hallelujah just because we want to cover up for the space. We are singing hallelujah because we know that Papa Musu is resting at the bosom of his maker and his savior. Lift up your voice and just give God praise and give him all the glory. If your hands are not weak, if you are not tired yet, pull those hands together to celebrate the glory of God for a life well spent. Now I'm not saying clap those hands because I'm here or clap those hands because you are celebrating your neighbor. I said put it together to the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Please we may be seated as royalties right in this place. Welcome everybody to the service of songs of a servant, a dear servant of God who served God and also served humanity with his time, his life and his resources. Talking about no other person but Reverend Emmanuel, it's all in one we all call Papa Mosu. For those who are even closer or more closely, they don't call him Papa Mosu, they call him Papu. And I'm sure we are all here smiling because of the indelible mark he made in our lives. A man that made so much mark that even at the headquarters church, he owned a corner. I came to realize what that corner was all about before I knew who that corner was named after. As a matter of fact, for me, in my head, I thought they named that place Papa's Corner because that's where Papa sits. Until someone told me the story and then pointed to the man who actually made that corner so popular. Generations after generations come to know Papa's Corner. Some don't know the story, but some don't know it. Just simply because the man decided to lay his hands on the altar. Right now, we shall be taking our very first game today. On the brochure that is with you, it's actually the second game, but that will be our very first game for today. And our first game for today says, My home is built. It is right on the third page of the brochure that is right in your hand. In case you don't have the brochure, please just look at the screens in front of you for the lyrics. And we shall be led by this amazing and harmonious team. Ladies and gentlemen, let's rise up on our feet this day as we take our first game for today. My hope is built.
taking our very first Bible reading from today. And it will be taking you from the book of Psalms 90 from verse 1 to verse 12. To be taken by no other person but one of Papa's grandchildren. Ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome Miss Chidiman Osuko. Let's put that hand together for her. Praise the Lord Church. Hallelujah. So I'll be taking the first Bible reading from Psalm 90 verse 1 to 12. And it says, Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, and ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art, thou art God. Thou turnest man to destruction, and sayest, Return, ye children of men. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday when it is past, and as a watch in the night. Thou carriest them away as a flood. They are as a sea. In the morning they are like grass, which groweth up. In the morning it flourishes and groweth up. In the evening it is cut down and withered. For we are consumed by thy anger, and by thy wrath are we troubled. For thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of the countenance. For all these are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. The days of our years are, are three score years and ten. And if by reason of strength they be four score years, yet in their strength, labor and sorrow, for it is so cut off and they fly away. Who knoweth the power of thine anger, even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. I will take that. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. May the Lord bless his reading. She said, May the Lord bless the reading of the word. Can there be a more resounding amen? Like my brother, Pastor Tony, who took the opening prayer, said, We're not here to mourn, but we're here to celebrate a life well lived. Exit might be painful, but the joy is that there is still going to be a time where we will see face to face. Except for those who don't have an understanding of this reality. But if you have that understanding, that a time will come where we will see face to face. I know somewhere in your mind you will be saying, when I see Papa, or when I see Papa, I will ask him one question. But the truth is, that by the time you see him, all your questions will have been answered. Because you'll be right present before your maker. And so, if you know that the reading of the word is blessed, let there be a more resounding amen. Glory to God. Right about now, we shall be taking our song ministration. And it will be taken by this amazing team of Pastor Nathaniel Basi. Let's put our hands together for them as they come.
as a reminder, that I will my name. We're taking the very first testimony for today, and that testimony will be taken by Mrs. Victoria Onwebu. Let's put our hands together for her as she comes. Mrs. Victoria Onwebu. What a great privilege to stand here this evening to testify about my father, not just my father, a warrior, a man that fought a good fight and he won. On behalf of the family, the immediate family of Reverend Emmanuel Echimole Musu, I want to testify today to a life well spent. Most of us know him as Papa Mosu in Trem, but we the children, we call him Papu. Papu was a very humble man. He was naturally humble. You can imagine a, a man having to lose both parents as an infant. Life for that moment. And at a point in his life, not knowing where to turn to, my father turned to the Lord. That's to tell you how humble my father was. He was a very humble man. He turned to God, and from that his early age, I stand here to say my father served God all through his life. Papo served God all through his life. I can say that. And we are consoled today because we know that Papa is resting. He's resting. And he's not just resting, he's resting in the bosom of the Lord. My father was a very hard working man. When you talk about hard work, my father was a very hard working man. My father was a very sincere man. He was a man of service. When you talk about a man of service, he loves, he loves to serve. My father preferred to serve. He doesn't want to be seen at the forefront. He wants to serve. He served so many men of God even before he joined strength. It was even at his place of service that he met my beautiful mother. Papa served God and he served men. He was a man under authority. He obeyed protocols. All you needed to do was to say, Papa, do this, and Papa will do it. Papa will do it. You want to do it in such a way that he will go extra mile. He will not just do it, he would go extra mile to make people happy. Somebody saw, when a friend saw his poster, his, and was like, ah, this your father must be a very jovial man. I said, yes. With his smile, he must be a very good man. I say yes. Papa will always want to make every difficult situation to be easy. He loved cracking jokes a lot. For those that came in contact with Papa, every time you bring a difficult situation in front of him, he wants to turn it to a joke. He wants to make that word in light. Papa was very honest. He served in so many departments in the church, in Trem headquarters, from Akoka. He served in the tithes, served in the marriage, and served in, served in the back, uh, baptism. For those that want to look for baptism, he served there. Papa served in so many areas in train, and he was faithful. Papa was a very punctual man. He was very punctual. If the service is going to start at 3 o'clock or at 6, Papa will be there by 4. He will be there before everybody. Papa lived a good life. As a family, as his children, he lived a very good life. I never heard my father at any time he use an abusive word. My father will never abuse you. He will never use an abusive word. Even to us as children, he never used abusive words. He would rather say, God bless you. 
even to my mother. There was never a time I saw my father being harsh to my mother. But I would, but Papa would rather take the blame. He would rather take the blame than to cause a quarrel or to fight with someone. I never saw my father fought with anybody. Papa lived a good life. Papa's life can be likened to the story we see in the Bible in the book of Matthew 25 from verse 14 downwards. The story of a master who was going to go on a, a trip and he called his servants, he called the slaves and he said, to the first one he gave five talents, five bags of gold. The second one he gave two. And to the last one, he gave one. The first one traded with it and doubled it. The second one traded with it and doubled it. And the last one dug the ground and kept it. Papa did not dig the ground. He traded with every talent that God gave him. You can imagine a child that had no parents. Somebody, some, some people could say, ah, this God is wicked. Why did he allow my mother and my father to die as an infant? But, but Papa chose the right path. Even though life was not friendly at a point, he chose the right path and he served God all through his life. I am proud to say that I'm happy to be one of his beloved children. As a baby, as a child, growing up, my father would always pamper me. I was, I was like his pet. He even gave me a nickname, Vicky Bakapuku. <laughs> I thought I loved him so much. I was very close to my father. So today I'm consoled, we are consoled as a family, knowing fully well that our father lived a good life. He may not have had all that he would have wished to have, but he lived a God fearing life. And today he has left that fear of God in us. I'm very proud to say that he, the greatest gift, even though he didn't give us the whole money, he didn't give us the whole world, but he gave us Jesus. And as a family today, Papa made sure that we all know Jesus. And that is the greatest gift anyone can be remembered for. I want to encourage us this evening. We are here today remembering Papa. What will you be remembered for? There is somebody to stand and say, yes, we lived a good life. Yes, my father lived a good life. And like I said, we are consoled knowing that he's resting. And one good day, we are going to meet him at that resurrection feast. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Um, I'm not sure if Papa or Papo had a nickname for me because I can't remember. But I remember Vicky Vakavum. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Um, I don't think I have so much to say because uh, Vicky has said almost everything. And um, one thing I can say is Papa was a very jovial person. You know, he had an exclamation which was very unique. And it's Abraham. <laughs> he's always saying Abraham when he's surprised. You know, and initially I was wondering what, what has Abraham got to do with this thing? You know, and um, 
But I'm consoled because right now I'm sure he has seen the real Abraham. You know? <laughs> Praise the Lord. For me, I, I, I miss him because whenever we speak, he will pray. He's always praying for, for us. And then, um, well, he's going to rest. He's going to rest. And um, I also want to appreciate my mom. You know, we're going to talk a lot about Papa today. But I also want to appreciate my mom because she's a very good woman. You know, um, she, she tried. You know, she, she tried. It's not, it's not very easy. You know, being the friend, the mother, the doctor in the house, everything. She tried. Yeah? And I want to appreciate everyone for, for your prayers and your support. As Vicky said, my dad was very humble. If I can't remember so many things about my dad, he's a very humble man. He doesn't want the limelight. You know, he would rather support you to take the credit. And he's always apologetic, even when he's right. You know, he's always for peace. And was always vulnerable. He was not afraid or ashamed to cry if he, if he needed to. He wouldn't say because he's a man or he's a father. He's not ashamed to do that. So we remember him with gratitude to God for a life well spent. And sometimes when people die, you are forced to say good things about the person because you want to be nice. But for my dad, I'm not forced to say it because I'm actually saying the truth. He was a very good man. I will miss him, but I know he's resting. And someday we'll see in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much, Dr. Mike. We shall be taking the next hymn, which should actually be a third hymn, but now it's the second hymn. It's on the page four. It says, In Christ Alone. We shall rise upon our feet at this very point as we take the hymn, ladies and gentlemen. Like I said earlier, if you don't have the brochure in your hand, please look at the screen that is right in front for the lyrics of the song. In Christ alone.
message. It says, no guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first bright final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hands till he returns or calls me home, which he has already done for my home. Here in the power of Christ, we stand. We'll be taking our second reading, Bible reading for today, and it will be led by Master Michael Nungi. Let's put our hands together for him as he comes. A round of applause, people of God, put it together better. Praise the Lord. Our second Bible reading is going to be taken from the book of John, chapter 14, verse 1 to 6. John, chapter 14, verse 1 to 6. Ladies and gentlemen, stars and mass, permit me this evening to read from the New Living, sorry, the New International Version. And it says, do not let your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has so many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going. So how can, how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
happy then to see that this is one of the best fires I've met in my life. Why did I say that? Because in the course of the you please may be seated royalties, thank you. Because in the course of the hip while my brother was soloing and most of us couldn't either see the screen or could take the lyrics of following the same pace. All we just did was that we waited for him and the chorus. And when he got there, we joined him and then we all took it together. And at that point I could hear the auto, the tenor, the treble, the soprano, the sopratonic. And every other one that will follow. Can you put your hands together for yourself? For being a wonderful and amazing gift. At this point, we shall be taking the biography of the amazing people. So, the daughter of this great servant of God. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me as I welcome Mrs. Isenne Muji and Dr. Michael Chiki once again. Let's put our hands together for them. Which, trans which transferred him 
and he's on that to Moravia, Liberia, to work for two years. In 1967 to 1969, December, it was there God provided him with a fine lady as a wife to marry. He wedded on the 25th of November, 1969, in Moravia. See the big God that is his own grace and his mercy and love. Indeed, he pays to serve God. Who knows how to repay the sons in his own words? He came to he came to his mind to resign from his former church, to go over to a Pentecostal church, which we are very few at then. The best option for him then was to find a good Bible school to be trained as a pastor. The Lord provided more for him, namely Trinity College of Ministeria at three comma in Abba. By the grace of God, he became trained for two years, which gave him diploma certificate in theology. He had he got his salvation in the college in 1981. After his salvation, Reverend Ojeki, his teacher then, took him to Reverend Mike of Pompo, then that was when we called our bishop, Reverend Mike of Pompo. He said in his own words, I was afraid and I prayed before going to meet him. I was afraid of his face, but I loved him in my heart because of how he handled prayers. Handled prayers in Abba. The girl was shaking. The Holy Spirit came down upon many at Trikom, Abba. Because of the mercy and love of God, Dr. Mike Okonpo finally looked on him with compassion and took him to work in Trent in 1983. In his own words again, he said, I step aside in 2006 because of ill health. All I know is that Trent is my church. In Trent, we have worked in so many places, tight and offering departments, with important people working with him. He taught in children's departments. He also worked in the marriage cancer department. He also worked in the de uh, baptism department. He also dubbed Bishop Asset for souls in those years. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Reverend Papa Mosu served in Trent Abak, Trent Portacos, before he relocated to Vegas. He served in Akoka. He suffered stroke while in official duty in Abak. Hallelujah. Reverend Mosu is so many things to so many people, especially those who know him in trouble. He was very committed pastor.
one great lesson I'm also taking out is that when you have your children, do not show favoritism. Just love them the way they are. In the course of that testimony, another amazing soul was mentioned. And Dr. Mike also mentioned that in passing. When I saw or when we went to see her, she said something. She said, it's time for her back to rest. And the course of our gathering here today, we have established that he's a warrior. And I'm sure everybody here will agree with me that when a warrior is done with battle, he needs to rest. That's exactly what Papo is doing right now. He's resting at the bosom of the Lord. Which was not part of the script, but then she added, was the song she sang. I am not willing to sing that song. But by the grace of God, I can stand here today to say that because he served and he lived an indelible man, not just in the lives of members, but also in the life of the pastorate or the, the pastorate of the Redeemed Evangelical Mission Headquarters Church, I am privileged to stand behind this sacred desk to call the man whose name was sung as a song to come give a testimony on behalf of Trail Headquarters and the pastor. Ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome Reverend Dennis Kenkwok. Praise the Lord. Somebody shout hallelujah. Really, we come to celebrate life. Come to celebrate life. Somebody that live a great life. Emmanuel Ejinole Mosu. I'm standing here today to testify on his behalf. Standing here to testify in behalf of Reverend Emma Ejinole Mosu who has gone to be with the Lord, has gone to rest. I'm standing here for headquarter pastors. And I want to testify and to say, I know Papa for longest time. I know him right from the Bible school, Tecoma. I was there, he met me in 1981. And then he left the church where he is pastoring before. And to answer the call. Now, Papa King, you see, he's a man that we want to know more, we want to learn. Papa likes to learn. He's a humble person. I work with Papa till he retire from the headquarters church. He met me the headquarters church, we all work together until he retire, still coming to church. Papa is a good man, he's a warrior. Very humble person. We work in the same department. We work in marriage council together. We almost don't have a problem with it because if you are not happy with something, you know what to do, you will come and come to yourself and beg you. You don't like the poor, you don't have to understand. Papa loves his children. A hard working person, very committed. Papa is committed to you. He will send you to a fault. I'm talking about most we work together. Yeah, we most we work together. You see, you don't know call me my name. I must, must. We respect you. What is all that be? We respect you. Like the children said, Papa don't have any problem. Any assignment you give to Papa, you must surely deliver that. We do it to the extent that you will be over and you will be very happy. We will not complain. 
You see? When he retired and uh, because of his illness, and uh, he is still coming to church. Everybody in the church loves him. The pastor loves him. We have an old moment. No dull moment. He made you happy. You want to know what is your problem to help to solve this problem? See, God really blessed Papa Mosu. Let's know this. Like Vicky said, we're not talking about money. God really blessed this man. He has two daughters. He has two men of God marry the children. It's a blessing. People of God, what are you looking for? It's a blessing. Two men of God, two daughters. What are you talking about? What type of blessing are you looking for? God really honored him. Let me tell you, headquarters church doesn't joke with Papa. Bishop Michael doesn't joke with Papa. He lives with the people of Bishop Michael and Big Daddy. Papa lives with Big Daddy. To tell you how it is. He's an honest and straightforward person. I'm saying it because um, he is somebody that when Papa comes near you, I look at you, he will make you to laugh. He will joke with you, and the whole thing that you are talking about is just over. So I really want to thank God for the life well spent. Even the time he left, everybody in the headwater church, the pastor, they love Papa Moses. I can stand here and say to everyone, they love Papa Moses. Because the way he brought up his children, all these children, Papa trained them. Very hardworking man. But today, you can see the blessing. You can see what God has done in his family. So he has got to rest. We are not, we are not, we are not money, we are not crying. But 82 is not 81 days. It's not 81 days. But the only thing you know that when it happened, I know it's for my you feel it. But you don't need to cry. God has blessed you, he has come to be with and rest. We all the celebrate him today. So on behalf of them, they work as much. We are saying to the family, God has already blessed you and be with you. Even those things that uh, you, may, you may ask Papa when is when is that? I believe that God is going to console every one of you and uh, speak to you the way you will understand Papa can even speak to you. Yes. Our prayer is that every one of us will live and also live as he also has lived and then give very well when Jesus, when God calls you, will answer that call. This is the best way to go and rest when God says come back and rest. I'm happy that Reverend Moses is in the person of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I say, praise the Lord. God bless you. For clapping, we can put those hands together. We talk about missing the word of God. And I thought we always say that word is not a word to come. That would be the word that originates from us who has been here. Because there is no amount of mercy that can produce in there. He has meant to save you. So we will now ask you to receive the word and we say to us that we should pay attention to what is going to be said. But before the word, we will be another servant of God who is also a friend of the family who could also say that he has experienced love with this great family. He was a friend to Dr. Michael, and of course, the minister of God, who has been graced to minister in songs. Ladies and gentlemen, to take us in the session of worship, let us welcome Pastor Nathaniel Bass. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, hallelujah. 
hallelujah where papa is where papa is now it's very loud revelations 19 he says again he said hallelujah let somebody shout hallelujah let somebody shout hallelujah amen while we get ready um, dr mike has asked me to say one or two things about Papa or Papo, like I, I grew up knowing. Um, I'm more than just a family friend to the family. I'm like one of the sons of the house. I was so close to the family. I would go, Dr. Mike and I would go to the house, would see Papo, and Papo was. It, it, it was just because he was a pastor. Papa was almost like a comedian. He would crack us up. We would laugh. We would laugh and laugh and laugh. And I mean, we would see me, ask about me, ask about my welfare, and they just really loved me. And there was a time in our lives when we had, when I had accommodation issue. I know many people won't believe it because sometimes when God leaves you, people think you are from nowhere. And believe it or not, number nine Solomon Street was one of the places that opened their doors to me. The house that Papa owned was like my second home. I would go there we would, from church, we would just go there. Mike would be so gracious, we would stay there, sleep, and you know, walk from there. And, I, and, and when I head here, I'd gone to be with the Lord. Despite the very busy schedule we had, I told Mike, what light is wherever it is, I'll come to just sound this trumpet. To honor a, a man, a good man, and I'm just going to do something before we start. I want to just release a trumpet sound to herald. Of course, it's already there, but I could imagine angels sounding the trumpet as he walks in. That's that's that that city of gold. They're corrected with his crowns. So can I ask you to stand? The echo was happening. So when you hear the trumpet, let's salute a kingdom general who has crossed over, who is looking and sharing us all that now. So when you hear the sound, and I can see Mama, Amen. Mama, Mama, I love you. <laughs> so when we hear the sound of this trumpet, let's let's give a resounding herald to this great man that lived a simple life. Yet an impactful life.
Michael to sleep like a big brother, you know, so close. I want to tell you that Papa is going to be with the Lord and he's cheering you. And I know that you do more than he's done. Amen. The champion of the whole. Say amen. Yeah. If you know 
making a sense? Let's shout an amen. Praise the Lord. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. As you please take your seat. Hallelujah. Once again, it's an honor and privilege to be given this opportunity to speak to speak uh, in this uh, service of song for Apo. Apo was somebody that I knew personally and who encouraged me very much. He was a servant of God. And I thank God for his life. Let me extend my condolences to the family, everybody that is affected. One thing we must know is that Papa is not dead. He just changed address. He went to rest, like somebody said. After a warrior has done fighting, what does he do? He lays down his sword and takes a rest. The one thing I told God, I said, when I get to that time when my body will not be able to carry me anymore, or when I become a body to the living, I want to go home. Praise the Lord. Yeah. You know, the black man doesn't want to talk about death. Yes, but according to William Shakespeare, death is a necessary end that will come when it will come. Yes, Praise the Lord. Yeah. Uh, once you have been born, Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 2, the next thing that is waiting is that one day you will call home. Praise the Lord. When that time comes, may we not have anything to regret. In Jesus' name. Well, and He is still one of us. Praise the Lord. So we are all, you know, touched. We are all affected by His departure. And we will miss Him so very much. Praise the Lord. It was Papa that gave me the pamphlet, Sinners in the Hand of the Angry God, by Jonathan Edwards. Praise the Lord. You know, very wonderful man. Very wonderful man. Amen. So tonight, without wasting much of our time, a lot has been said, a lot has been said, a lot has been preached. Pastor Nat, you are welcome. God bless you, Rido. Thank you for being a blessing. Praise the Lord. You know, you know, I know, I know that growing up in church too, and with his trumpet, and you know, we are not very popular there, but we sell everybody. Praise the Lord. And thank God for his grace. It's by his grace that we are what we are. Praise the Lord. God bless you, Ringo, and take you high. In Jesus' name. Alright, praise the Lord. Without wasting much of our time, I want to share a brief word with us today. A preacher, somebody said that we must live our lives in such a way that when it is our turn to go and the preacher comes to stand to preach, he doesn't have to lie. Praise the Lord. He doesn't have to lie to speak good things about you, but just, just say the truth the way it is. Praise God. So if you will with me, if you will, I will crave your indulgence to come with me this evening to the book of 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy. Praise the Lord. Chapter number 4. I'll read from verse 6 to 8. Popular scripture that most of us know by heart. Shall we go? It says, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. And I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, not a corrupt judge, not a wicked judge, he will give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love is appearing. Let's visit the book of Revelation, chapter 22. That's the last chapter in the Bible. I'll just read the verse in verse 12. Praise God. It says, And behold, I come quickly, and 
and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work, his work shall be. Let's burden our heads in prayer. Father, we thank you this evening. We bless you for this opportunity. You said it is more blessed to be around here. You said because this is the end of all flesh. The living shall do well to take it to heart. And so this evening, Father, inscribe eternal truth in our hearts. Strengthen us and encourage us. Take your place, Father, and take all the glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let me start by saying to us once more that Papa is not dead. Papa is in the bosom of the Lord. He has gone to rest. He has fought his good fight. He has finished his course. And he has kept the faith. He has kept the faith. He stood strong until the end. And now he's gone home to rest. And I had a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right. Blessed are the dead that die in the Lord, yea, from henceforth, that they may rest from their labors, and their work do follow them. Revelation 14 13. They will rest from their labors, from their toils, from the fear of kidnapping. From the fear of coronavirus, from the fear of violence, not knowing what's going to happen next, from the fear of landlords, rent, school fees, from the fear of going to hospital, that they may rest from their labors. Yea, they will rest from their labors, and their work do follow them. I want to say today that we must stand strong in service. Papa was said to be a servant, somebody who served. I am concerned particularly today, we are not preaching to Papa, somebody has said it here, because Papa has finished his own assignment, he has gone to rest. Whatever we are saying here does not concern him at all. Praise the Lord. Whatever we are saying here, we are saying to the living, we are saying to the, we are saying to the footmen, we are saying, we are saying to men who are still in the battlefront, we are saying to men who are still holding the sword and who are fighting on, we must finish well. I mean, the Lord give us grace to finish well. In the mighty name of Jesus. You know, Paul, the servant of God, the scripture we first read is Second Book of Timothy, chapter four, and the Book of Second Timothy is one of the prison epistles. It was written by Saint Paul while he was in prison. Actually, he was awaiting execution. At that time, he had been tried and found guilty and condemned to death. I think that was about the third time. Praise the Lord. While he was in prison awaiting the execution, he remembered his prodigy in the person of Timothy. And he knew that after I had gone, this young man we need to fight on, the first bishop of the Christian churches. He said, I need to put down some things to encourage him. And so he picked up his pen by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit and he began to write to Timothy. And he said, Timothy, I fought a good fight for I didn't fight a bad fight. I didn't fight a blue fight or a lost fight. I fought a good fight. I finished my course. May that be your testimony. Yeah. I said, may that be your testimony. Yeah. Every child of God that is in this house tonight, as we pray 
our father farewell. As we tell him goodbye to see him again on the resurrection morning, as we gather all here tonight, may our testimony be that on the day that it will, it will be our turn, because it will be the turn of each and every one of us in Jesus Christ. May our testimony be that I fought the good fight and that I finished my course. You may fight, but may not finish. But Paul says, I fought and I finished. Ah, may your testimony be that you completed your course. In the mighty name of Jesus. He said, I fought a good fight. I finished my course and I kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me. I'm going home to receive my crown, to receive my reward. Praise the Lord. That they may rest from their labors and their works to follow them. I am going home to rest. I am particularly concerned today, in today's Christianity. You know, it is not many people that have the servant heart anymore. Because when people want to serve, they are asking, what is there for me? What will you give me first before I serve? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. We are all stewards. And that implies that we are servants. And that everything God has put in your hands, you are gifted, you are talented. If you are, if you are handsome, God has blessed you. It's even a gift for you to glorify the name of the Lord. Thank God for your life. If you can sing, if you went to school, praise the Lord. Leave all this five notes who didn't go because there may be something those people have that you don't have. We must watch pride. Pride is a problem in the church. And when pride comes in, everything gets messed, messed up. You are not looking for your own. I will ascend, I will do this, I will do this. That's the number of your center, if I remember very well. I will become, I will be this. You know, I will take over the throne of God. So if you now take over the throne of God, that will God be. When pride comes in, you will not be able to evaluate yourself, you know, appropriately. And I remember the Bible saying to us that I say according to the day that you give it to me, uh, 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 to every man amongst us, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, even as God has dared to give and every one of us a measure of faith. There is a strong point where you are. There is a place that God has given to you as your point of strength. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You may not be strong everywhere. Just know your own point of strength. And also recognize and appreciate God in other people when they are giving them strength. You can't be taller than me and taller than me at the same time. Praise the Lord. And if you are fairer than I am, I am darker than you are. Have you? Have you been me? Have you been there yourself? Praise God. And where you are, and the strength God has given to you, having a life of that, develop yourself in that area. Use it to the glory of God. That is why He gave it to you in the first place. Be a servant. Praise the Lord. But much more because I don't have a lot of time here. Because, uh, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to do. Praise the Lord. And they don't spring too long in the evening service. Praise the Lord. You, we, we don't need to really forget who we are. We are actually servants. That's the point I'm making. But the point I'm also making is that some people don't serve as servants anymore. Some people don't serve knowing that there is something for them ahead. Some people have forgotten who it is that and please take them into the army. To whom they are going to give account to one day. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. He's a giver of the gift. The gift is meant to be used to glorify.
glorifying him. Praise the Lord. Because today, a lot of people, they, 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 they're not conscious of that. Jesus says, Behold, I come quickly. Bro. He said, My reward is in my hand. I am the rewarder. I am coming, and I'm coming quickly. And I'm going to give to every man according to his works. You can't, you can't walk in Jesus' Vega and you go to Jacob at the collect salary. Praise the Lord. God does not call any man. When you work for him, he pays you accordingly. Remember the parable of the of the of the laborers that he went to hire. He hired them at different points. But when the time for payment run, he, he, he paid everybody according. If there is something else, God will give you much more. Praise the Lord Jesus. But you need to understand that what God has given to you is for service. To serve for the kingdom of God, to serve the brethren, to serve the church of Jesus Christ. When the time comes for lifting, God will lift you up. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. It is not a part of again that you put first. You put the service of the Lord first. There is somebody that is watching. This area of teaching and other is not something that we emphasize in churches anymore. But we need to go back there so that people will know why they are serving. You really need to know why you are serving. So that you don't think that you make yourself. Paul was writing and said, What is it that you have that you didn't receive? And who made you to be different from another person? It was God that packaged you and put everything, all the treasures in the inside of you. Praise the Lord. Even before the world began. To be manifested in time to the glory of Christ, His Son. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So we must understand this. Because when you look at Christians serving today, sometimes when you stand with them side by side, you 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 are you are afraid for yourself. My reward is coming. And so some people say, My reward, my reward is coming. My reward. Some of you that went to see you understand what I'm talking about. Praise the Lord. My reward is coming. And because I know that my reward is coming, the one who pays and who pays well, I walk knowing that when it comes, he will pay me. And when God pays it, He doesn't pay you only when you die. He pays you in life. We are talking about Papa. How God has blessed him. With the children, God has blessed him. He served. Why would you be blessed? He served. He served. And apart from the rewards of you know, good wife, good children, you know, seeing your children grow up in your presence and doing well and all that, having your grandchildren. No, you know, you know, it's a great blessing. He kept the faith. And now when he sees his maker, he has seen him face to face. Praise the Lord. The Lord will say to him, Well done, thou good and faithful. Enter into the joy of thy Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul said, I go to receive the crown, the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge. He will not take my labor and attribute it to another person. He's not unmindful of my sacrifices. He's not unmindful of my pains, my denials. He's not unmindful of the things I'm going through, serving him because of him. You know, there are some things you would have done if not for God. Is that also? Yeah. I would have done this, but because of God, I'm not going to do this. That is what is called the fear of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I know how to do this. See, see, see this thing you are doing. I, I, I do it better than you. But I wouldn't do it because 
My reward is coming. He pays and he pays well. Faithfulness pays. People, faithfulness pays. Whatever God puts in your hand to do, do it well. If you sweep the floor, sweep it well. If you are an usher, usher well. Praise the Lord. And if you are in a position where you have to take care of, see to the welfare of other brethren, please make sure you do it as unto the Lord. Because he's coming. I want to see believers serve, serve with that consciousness. Serve with that consciousness that it is not unto man, but it is unto the Lord. It is unto Jesus. He's watching me. He's looking at me. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. God is watching everything you do. The tears you shed in the night. He knows. The inconveniences that you have to go through in order to ensure that His will is done in your life. He knows. He also knows whether you are a Judas. Hmm? He knows. And when the time comes, what is he doing will come to the open. You know the Bible says something. It says, judge not yet until he comes. I think First Corinthians 4 5. He said, judge not yet until he comes. I mean, who is going to what, bring the hidden things to? When God puts you in his care, what will you win? When God puts you in his care, what will you win? You know, there was a man in the Bible called Saul, the first king of Israel. If you have read about the institution of the monarchy, you find out that Saul was the first king of Israel. Am I correct? Now it got to a point that God said, I have rejected him from being king. And God stopped talking to Saul. God decided, I'm not going to do anything with him. But you know, Saul had to be on the throne for another 20 years. Ah, may you not be there making noise when, when heaven has already condemned you. You remember the king of Israel? God said to Joshua, to Moses, he said, all these ones, none of them is going to enter. They will not enter. Because they doubted me. They saw my miracle. They saw my power. They saw what I could do. They experienced my omnipotence. And yet, they refused to believe me. God said, none of them is going to enter. You know what happened? God was still feeding them for 40 years with manna. It's a dangerous thing to think that God is still with you. After heaven has already backed you up. And they are really looking for a replacement. May you not be replaced while you are still alive. Yeah. May you not, you know, become the deliver in the hand of God. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. As we celebrate this iconic man, this great man, Papa. Papa, I hope you are hearing me from where you are. If you are hearing me, Babo, I'm privileged to be preaching today. Yeah. Hallelujah. That man touched my life. He counseled me. He talked to me. When there was no form, no confidence. He was not looking for reward. He was trying to make impact. He was not serving as unto man. He was serving as unto God. Now that he has returned home to his maker, welcome, my son. You have done well. You have fought well. Come and rest. Praise the Lord. He's now resting. He's waiting for us. When it is your turn, and the saints will gather to bid you farewell, what will be said about you? Fade in the way like the stars of the morning, losing their lights in the glorious sun. Dust would we pass from the earth and his toiling. 
But there are some times that we need to hear his voice. There are some times they need his counsel, they need his advice. There's a time they need to consult him. You know, they wanted to meet him and say, Daddy, I'm having this, this challenge. What do you think I should do? But he's no longer there. I want us to pray that the Holy Spirit has such times. We minister to them. We give them direction. These ones will never be confused. You will never be stranded. In the mighty name of Jesus, commit them into the hand of God. Commit them into the hand of God. Let God comfort them. Let God console them. In the name of Jesus, as we pray, let's pray for them. That their destiny will not be altered in any way by the reason of Papa's departure. In the name of all that God has ordained for them, that the Lord will make it happen in their lives. One by one, in the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray for them. Touch, pray for them. Touch, pray for them. La bosa talia mako talibra li satila bosa ta. La bosa talibra li katala ma yante ne bosa. Eya boso tole ke tele bosa tele ma she tele ba zeta. Fanda kapanya tapa. May this works of God trail my father the footsteps of their father in service of God. The legacy of humility, the legacy of service of God, the legacy of commitment, dedication of God, friendship of God. Obedience to divine instructions of the Holy Ghost. May his children, oh God, his children, children, my Lord, this family, each and every one of them, oh God, may they throw the path in the name of Jesus. If they counsel, oh God, in the night season, if they counsel, oh God, for their lives, if they counsel for their destinies, in the name of Jesus, we pray, Lord, they will not be stranded. We pray, Lord, Makapayada, Mayada, Mayada. You will show up for them, oh God, in the name. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father, the legacy, the good legacy that the man has put down for them or laid down for them. Lord, they will follow it. They will keep to it. They will defend that good name in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Father, Lord, we pray particularly for his life partner, oh God, who he has left, my Father. At this time, Father, comfort her, strengthen her, equip her, oh God. Cover her, Father, in the name of Jesus. And I pray for you all. May the blood of the everlasting covenant that we have in Christ, may that blood continually speak on your behalf. Thank you, Lord. We call it done by faith. And everyone who believes says, Amen. Amen. So let it be. Thank you, God bless you, Rico. Please go. Thank you, Reverend Steve and for a word of encouragement. Church. Quickly, I'd like to bring up Dr. Joseph Omosu to lead the family in their thanksgiving as well as the vote of thanks. Dr. Joseph Omosu. Let's put our hands together for him as he comes. medical doctor so I see people dying almost every day but I still want to thank God for his life you know, I want to thank God for his life I really
really missing. I really missing. Every day, whenever we discuss on phone, you will always bless me. You say, God bless you. God bless you. At times, we quarrel because you always address me as sir. I say, No, that you cannot address me as sir. Just call me by my name. I really miss him. But I thank God for his life. So on behalf of the most family, the in-laws and the friends, we want to thank everybody that has taken time, as I said, to honor our dad. Our big mommy and big daddy, even though they are not here, they really supported us. They gave us words of encouragement and uh, they really helped us. We really appreciate them. We also want to thank all the pastors, trail pastors, and other pastors from other ministries that are taking time to come and honor us because I see it as honoring us. So we pray that God also will also honor you and bless you and bless your family. Long life will be your portion in Jesus' name. We also want to try to uh, thank our friends, those from that person that came to greet this audition. We also pray that God will also bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Our invited guest, Pastor Nathaniel and his team, we really appreciate you. Honestly, I never knew you have a chance to come, but thank God you made it. We pray that God will continue to bless your ministry in Jesus' name. Amen. And also, we cannot forget the pastor of this is our branch, Trem KG, Pastor Matthew Albert, and members that has given us a. Please, in case I miss the name, please pardon me. So, but we really appreciate your effort in hosting us. And we pray that God also bless this church and all the members in Jesus' name. And we also pray that even as you go back, God will take you to your different destination. We will not hear of any bad news from anybody in Jesus' name. We, saw, we, saw, we also want to thank our cousins that came all the way from the east. Brother Sam, Samuel, also our other cousin, Mazu Okoro Mosu, and the wife and the family. They are my in-law from Abagana, and my in-laws to Pastor Mike, Pastor Potikai. We have really been of help to our family and we really appreciate you. We pray that God will honor everybody here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. I, I would like to personally call on my uncle. He's actually seated back there, but I can see you from here. If you don't mind, please. Please, let's put our hands together for him. I'll tell you why. I, I want to really appreciate him because he's been very supportive and um, I know he's a very humble man, he doesn't want the limelight but we, are, we appreciate you, we see you, God bless you, we, we thank you for, for coming, we thank you for the support and the prayers and the family. I also want to thank, this is very unusual, I want to thank my brother, uh, he's a very strong man, he doesn't have so many words but I want to thank him because he's been very supportive. You know, he's the first son. I don't know if you'd like to come back as the first son. <laughs> so, but please do, next time. <laughs> we are enjoying his leadership. Praise the Lord. And I also want to thank my mom. She's a very strong woman. You know, it's unusual to thank people like this in situations like this. But I thank her. She's very strong. She's always very positive. You will never get anything negative from her. Although she has her own wahala sometimes. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And all my in-laws, thank you so much. You know, there are so many, I can't list them. Some people, like uh, my brother, he doesn't smile too much. <laughs> Mr. Matthew, God bless you. All right? But he's a very good man. Yes, please. You know, let's, I, I won't have this opportunity again. So let me enjoy my space. Praise the Lord. I also want to thank um, Brother 
Agency. I appreciate you so much for you, for your support and the family. You've been very supportive. God bless you. Thank you so much for taking the time out to be here. And um, Mazi God Koro, I think you mentioned. In fact, I know I can't mention everybody, but there's some people I just want to appreciate. Pastor Nathaniel Bassi, thank you so much. I know you're a very busy, busy man. You know, I must confess, my sister has been asking me for your number. So I'm giving her the one that's not working. <laughs> because I know she will stress you so much. So I'll give her the one that goes to voice me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So I really appreciate you for taking the time out to be here. I know you're very busy and I thank this wonderful team. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much. I just want to appreciate everybody, family, friends, for taking our time of a busy schedule to be here. We really appreciate you. And I'm so sorry if I can't mention your name, but really we appreciate you for your time and your support and your prayers. All the 10 pastors, we appreciate you. God bless you so much. We really thank you for Pastor um, for giving us this space at the very short notice also. We appreciate you so much. God bless you very much. Amen. A round of applause for the family, please. Praise the Lord. And please, for those who would like to uh, post a tribute in honor of um, our dad, if you go to um, thekingdomtvinternational.org, www.thekingdomtvinternational.org, there's a button there for posting a tribute. You can actually post a tribute and have your name on the website. So please, we really appreciate and if you can do that, thank you so much and God bless. I'm sure we all got that. The Kingdom TV International is Alright, so the Kingdom TV International dot org. Um, you see an icon where you can click to send in your tribute. I have just a very brief announcement before we take the last hymn, after which we'll share the benediction together as a congregation. The internment is taking place tomorrow at Ikoi Cemetery and the time is 10 a.m. after which we have a reception at number 9 Solomon Street, Alapere for everyone. So for those who would be chance to join the family, the time is 10 a.m. If anyone to get is Ikoi Cemetery, but in case you can't join them to go down to Ikoi Cemetery, they can meet up with the family at number 9 Solomon Street. Alakwari. That will be the announcement for now. Right now we shall be taking the recession on him after which you hear the voice of the servant of God to share the benediction which is Reverend Mark Anthony Sikusur. It's been a privilege to stand before you to anchor today's event and I know that only the sound of joy will be heard in our homes. Ladies and gentlemen, let us rise up on our feet as we take the last thing for today, Old Rugged Cross.
know you will get your home safely. I pray for safety and security. I pray that your sleep shall be tweaked. You will wake up tomorrow strong, healthy, filled with vitality, energy, and vigor. I declare your tomorrow is definitely better than today. Jesus, mighty name we pray. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love.